The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is Your FBI, an official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Are you one of the 50 million Americans covered by Social Security? If so, have you any clear idea of your rights and benefits under Social Security? Well, there may be a pleasant surprise in store for you, for in a few minutes, you'll learn from our sponsor the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States, how easy it is to build social security into full security. Tonight's FBI file, The Would-Be Movie Star. As a general rule, statistics are rather dull. But here are some statistics which, to you and to every other good American citizen, should not only be far from dull, but should, in fact, be truly alarming. Last year in this country, major crimes alone were committed at the rate of nearly 5,000 every 24 hours. And the figures for this year already show an increase of almost 22%. And the figures are still climbing, particularly in that field of crime of which tonight's case from the files of your FBI is a recent example, the crime of robbery, which has increased during the last six months, almost 50%. Ever since she saw that movie a couple of weeks ago in which a baby stole the picture from the grown-ups in the cast, Ruth Patterson has been obsessed with three ideas. One, that her own two-month-old Ricky is three times cuter. Two, could have played the part ten times better, and that she and her husband Frank should move to Hollywood and get the baby into pictures. But thus far, they're still living in North Philadelphia. Where at the moment, little Ricky is... Well, roughly translated, that means bring me my supper bottle. Okay, okay, Ricky. I'm hurrying as fast as I can. Here. Here, take this bottle. Take it. Oh, that's it. Oh, gee, how you carry on. Oh, well, if you're going to be a movie star, I suppose you have to be a little temperamental. Just a minute. Now, just keep working on that bottle, honey. All right, all right, I'm coming. Hiya, sis. Oh, hello, Flo. Is uh, Frank home yet? No, he works overtime Monday. Come on in. Okay. <coughs> oh, gosh, excuse me. He don't hold a bottle so good. Okay, Mommy's back now. There we are. Uh. <laughs> Flo? Yeah? Come here. Well, what is it? Look at Ricky. Look at that face of his. Did you ever see such expression? Yeah, that's cute. Cute? With eyes like Jimmy Stewart, hair like Van Johnson, and a chin like Cary Grant, and all you can say is cute? Honey, I'm just happy he doesn't look like that husband of yours. Oh, gee, that reminds me. You know, you shouldn't even be here, Flo. Why not? Frank says he don't like for you to visit me. He thinks you're a bad influence. Haven't you given up caring what he thinks? Well, sure, but he's the only husband I've got. What about the Hollywood deal? Oh, you mean with Ricky? Yeah. Is Frank going to take you out there? No. He says that's out. You still want to go? Of course. 
Without Frank? Sure, but, but how? I think I've got an angle for you on that. Oh, gee, what is it? Your car's here, ain't it? Yeah, why? Get Ricky. We're all going to the store. Store? What store? There's a supermarket over on the other side of town. What are we going there for? Get Ricky like I tell you and let's go. This kid is going to co-star in a little act that'll get you and him to Hollywood. What? Pick him up, will you? And come on. Okay, here we are. Ah, oh, look, Flo. Ricky went to sleep in my arms coming over. Mm, that's well. Bring him and come on. Where? Into that store. Oh, but look, it's already closed. Don't you see the sign on the door? The manager's still in there. He'll let us in. Oh, okay. Now, I'll do all the talking. Come on. I still don't see what coming here has got to do with going to Hollywood. Well, just follow me. The manager sees us, but he's shaking his head no. Hold the kid up where he can see him. Oh, uh, y- you mean like this? Yeah. Come on to the door, mister. Oh, here he comes now. Look, let me do the talking. Oh, I wouldn't know what to say anyway. I'm sorry, ladies, but the store is closed. Yes, we know, and we wouldn't have bothered you except on account of the baby. You see, it's my sister's baby, and she forgot You don't to... have to tell me. You forgot to get milk for the baby, right? <laughs> Now, how did you know that? Lady, I unlock this door two or three times a week for the same reason. <laughs> oh, then you don't mind? Of course not. Come right in. <laughs> Thanks. Go ahead, sis. Okay. We can't turn down little fellas that need milk. No. Now, if you just wait right here, I'll go back to the ice Never bar. mind, mister. I beg your pardon? Never mind the milk. This is a stick-up. What? Oh. Shut up. Well, I didn't know we came over here for this. Quiet, will you? Get him up, mister, and walk over to that cash register. You're really holding him up? Do what I tell you, mister. Okay. Anybody in the back? Everybody else is gone. Okay. Over to the cash register. Here. Put the money in this paper sack. Fill that money bag, too. Hmm. Too bad I didn't think of this Saturday. We'd have got a bigger take. It would be too bad for you ever thought of it at all. Oh, now, mister, don't be sore. This is as big a surprise to me as it is to you. Now, wait a minute, mister. Take your hand out from under that counter. I just wanted to get Drop some... that gun. Oh, no, I won't. Flo, you shouldn't have fired that gun. Look, you made Ricky cry. <laughs> A few hours later, in the Philadelphia office of the FBI, agent in charge Marlin is studying some reports when... Marlin speaking. Police headquarters, Mr. Marlin. Here's one hot off the griddle for you fellas. Yes, what is it? A supermarket in North Philadelphia was stuck up right after closing time tonight by two women with a baby. Two women with a... That's right, a baby, and they escaped with $5,300 after shooting down the manager. Is he dead? No, he'll be all right. We got him in a hospital. Well, I don't see any FBI angle. Well, the car the women used was reported crossing over the New Jersey line at top speed about 30 minutes ago. Oh, I see. Well, under the National Stolen Property Act, that becomes our problem. Anybody get the license number? No, but it's a black Ford sedan, about a 41 model. Any description of the women? Well, the manager of the store gave a fair description. He's in the city hospital, and he's well enough to talk. Good enough. I'll send Special Agent Corey out there right away. Pour me another cup of coffee, Ruth, please. Oh, but you haven't got time, Frankie. Look at the clock. Hmm? No, well, fix me a cup anyway while I get on my coat and tie, huh? Oh, you better not stop for any more coffee, Frankie. You'll be late. Look, what's the matter with you this morning? Nothing, nothing's the matter. Why? You've been trying to rush me out of here ever since I got up. Oh, I am not. It's just your imagination. No, I'll answer it. Oh, no, I'll, I'll, I'll answer it. Uh, you go put on your tie. Okay. Here. Hello? Hello, sis. Has the jerk gone to work yet? Oh, um, good morning, Aunt Martha. How are you? What? Oh, 
Oh, I get it. Look, this will only take a minute. Yeah, um, yeah, Ricky's just fine. Now listen to me. As soon as Frank is gone, get yours and the kids' stuff packed. Oh, I see. Why? Uh, why is that, Aunt Martha? I'll be over to pick you up in about an hour, so you'll be ready. Yeah, but I... I'm I... trying to tell you. I've got it all fixed. We're leaving for California today. See you in about an hour. Oh, swell. Uh, well, I'm, uh, glad you called, Aunt Martha. Uh, goodbye now. So long. That was Aunt Martha, Frankie. What did she do? Change her mind and come back? What? Aunt Martha left for Florida two days ago, Ruth. But you must be mistaken. That was your sister Florence, wasn't it? Well, yes. But I I didn't want you to get upset. She was here at the apartment yesterday, wasn't she? What? You should have emptied her cork-tipped cigarette butts out of the ashtray, Ruth. Okay. She she was here, but I didn't Look, want... Look, for the last time, Ruth, I'm telling you to keep that sister of yours out of this house. Oh, but Frankie... She's no good and you know it. Now, if you don't stop seeing her, first thing you know, she'll she'll be getting you mixed up in something like this thing in this morning's paper. What thing? Two women. One of them with a baby stuck up a supermarket last night. They, 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 I, I didn't read about... Uh... Look it over. You'll see what I mean. So long, honey. So long. You keep away from that Florence. <laughs> Morning, Mr. Marlin. I had to go out on another case last night. Didn't get back. What happened on your supermarket investigation? You haven't seen my report yet? Oh, I just got in a few minutes ago. Oh. Well, I got one lead, and we ought to know any minute now whether it's a good one or not. What's that? The baby's footprint. Baby's footprint? Yeah. I don't see how when you... When the got... women came in to hold up the store, the baby was asleep in its mother's arms. Yes? The pistol shot wakened it, and the baby started crying and kicking. Uh-huh. The manager remembered hearing the mother tell the baby to stop pushing his feet against a glass case. Oh, and... and that's where you found the footprint. Right. Good, good. I hope so. Anyway, I got the lab to turn out a lot of copies of it last night, and by now every hospital in Philadelphia has one. Well, what makes you think the baby was born in the Philadelphia hospital? The police said the hijacker's car was seen speeding across the line into New Jersey last night. That could have been a trick to give a false lead. They could have jumped, doubled back later, you know. Yes, I suppose so. If that baby was born in a Philadelphia hospital, we ought to know any minute now who its parents are. Just a minute. Oh, come in, Flo. Aren't you ready to go yet? Well, I couldn't start packing till after Frankie had left, could I? Oh, okay, but hurry. We've got to be moving. Flo, the newspaper had a story all about it this morning. Oh, so what? They think we're over in Jersey somewhere. Yes, but Don't Frank... stand there. Finish packing that suitcase. Oh, okay. Did the jerk suspect anything? Well, he knew that you called a while ago. What'd you tell him? Nothing. That's a switch. What do you mean? Look, slam that bag shut and let's get out of here. Where's the kid stuff? Oh, it's already in the suitcase. Well, then shut it. Oh, all right. Okay, now come on. Got to meet somebody way over on the other... <gasps> Frankie. I found this on the floor of the car. Thought I'd better come back. What is it? A money bag with G&L Grocery Company's name on it. Well, what about it? I think your sister here can answer that. I don't know what you're talking about. There was a story in the paper this morning about two women and a kid. They held up the store that this money bag came from. So? I got a pretty good idea. You did the job and you took my wife and kid with you. Frankie, I... Honey, you know I'm telling the oh, truth. Oh, stop, will you? She probably hooked you in with some of that Hollywood talk, putting Ricky in pictures. Oh, I don't want to hear any more of this. Come on, sis. Wait a minute. Ruth. What are you doing with those bags? Well, what she I... should have done a year ago. She's leaving you. Oh, no. No, she's staying. Both of you are. We are not. I'm taking Ricky to Hollywood and you can't stop now, me. Now, look, you may be tired of me, Ruth, but you're not going anywhere with this sister of yours until I get the truth on this stick-up. You, uh, really want the truth? Yeah. Okay, sucker. Oh! Flo, that was 
Ricky's 10 o'clock bottle. <laughs> Return in just a moment to tonight's case, which shows how your FBI helps provide national security. Now let's listen in on a conversation about social security between a baseball fan named Jim Meyer and his friend, the Equitable Society representative. Well, now, um, let's see. You ask, who has the better chance of scoring a run? A man on second base or a batter with two strikes against him? Right. Why, the man on second, of course. That's right, Jim. And that illustrates a point about Social Security. In the old days, most of us had two strikes against us. Our chances of ever getting full security were slim. But now every man who has Social Security starts on second base. But how does he advance to the home plate, Carl? Through life insurance, Jim. Life insurance is the pinch hitter that never fails. For instance, at your age, by paying a comparatively small sum every week, you can double the protection you get from Social Security. Say, now that's an interesting angle. It's what you might call teamwork between Social Security and life insurance. Yes, Jim, many Americans don't realize what a wonderful asset they have in Social Security. They've never discovered how easy it is to build Social Security into full security through life insurance. Most people are amazed when they discover how little it costs. For instance, if you already own some life insurance your Equitable Society man may be able to show you how only a few dollars extra per month will give your family complete protection and assure you a comfortable retirement income through the Equitable Extended Income Plan. Remember, your Social Security benefits vary according to your age, salary, and family situation. Why not get the facts? Find out exactly what you're entitled to under Social Security. The government has prepared a special card that will help you secure this information. To obtain one of these cards, get in touch with your Equitable Society representative or send your name and address on a postcard to the Equitable Society care of this station. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E, the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Now, back to the FBI file, the would-be movie star. Although the number of major crimes committed by men is far greater than that of those committed by women, the criminal mind itself has no gender. The instinct or the urge to cheat, to rob, to kill can be just as strong in women as in men. And the woman who holds a gun in her hand is just as cold and ruthless and vicious and deadly as her male counterpart. And just as consistent, too, in leaving that inevitable trace which leads to her downfall. It was barely 30 minutes after the girl Florence had struck down her sister's husband, Frank, and fled from the apartment with her sister and the baby, that agent in charge Marlin and Special Agent Corey of the FBI arrived at the apartment house in North Philadelphia. Well, this is the right house number anyway, Corey. I hope they still live here. Yeah. Yeah, here it is. Mr. and Mrs. Frank Patterson, 2E, second floor. Come on. Go ahead. Thanks. You know, there's only one thing I don't understand in this case. What's that? Well, the hospital file on the baby's footprints is correct, but according to the record, the baby's father's a bookkeeper. What of it? Well, he just doesn't sound like the kind of person who'd have a wife that goes in for hijacking. <laughs> you should have been with the Bureau long enough, Corey, not to be surprised at anything. I know, uh, but... Hold it. A, B, E ought to be back toward the rear. Come on. C, D. That's E on the left there. Hold it. Just a minute, mister. Huh? You Frank Patterson? Uh, yeah. We're special agents of the FBI. Oh. You know why we're here? Yeah, I guess I do. 
But I'm telling you, my wife is innocent. It was her sister that got her into it. She's made nothing but trouble ever since she got married. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Not so fast. But she's taken my wife and baby away with her. I, I got to catch up with them before We'll they... do the catching, Patterson. Just tell us what happened. Well, I, I don't know all the details, but when I found that grocery company money bag on the floor of my car this morning on the way to work... Yes? Well, I knew who had done the robbery I read about, so I came tearing back to the house and found her sister was here getting ready to take Ruth and the baby away with her. What did you do? I tried to put her out of the house, but she struck me with something I passed out. What's her name? Florence. Florence Bethel. She lives at 824 North Street, but I don't suppose they went there. Corey. Yeah? Hop over to that address right away and see what you can find out. I'll be back at the office. Right. The old guy's going to drive us to California. What old guy? Oh, the one I told you about. He had an ad in the paper that he was driving through and would share expenses. I called him this morning and made the deal. Well, why couldn't we go on the train? It's safer for us this way. Oh. How do, ladies? Oh, hi. I'm Mr. Chandler. Are you the ones who are waiting for me? Yeah. Yeah, we're the ones. Fine, fine. Say, that's a mighty young baby you got there to be making such a long trip. Oh, yes, sir. He's only two months old, but he's just the cutest... He's real tough. He can take it. Oh, I promise you he won't be any trouble to you. He couldn't be any trouble for me, young lady. I like babies. Oh, you do? Okay, then. Let's get started. Very well. I'll give you a hand with your bags, and then we'll all be off for good old California. What did you find out, Corey? The sister had already packed and left her rooming house. But I got a lead on where they're probably headed for. Yes, where? The landlady overheard Florence Bethel using the payphone in the hall this morning. Uh Uh-huh. The landlady heard her say, Are you the man who had the ad in the paper about driving to California? That's all she had a chance to hear. That's enough for us. Get all the newspapers for a week back and we'll start checking all the personal travel ads. Found one to California yet, Corey? Not yet. Several to Florida, one to Chicago, and two to Texas. I'm having the same kind of luck so far. It's just got to be at least one to California. I'm on the last list now, so... Wait. Wait a minute. Find one? Yes. Yes, give me the phone. What did they say? Chandler's our party, all right. That was his niece. What route are they taking to California? His niece didn't know, but look up the number of the American Motor Club. What? She heard Chandler call the club to have them lay out a route for him. Good. Okay, here's the route they're taking. Then let's hit the highway. Well, that's doing it the hard way, Corey. What do you mean? They've got at least a three-hour lead on us. Yeah, but... Now, we know the route they're taking and how much mileage Chandler plans to make each day. So after we put out a general police alert for them, let's pick out a plane stop somewhere on the route up ahead of them and... Young ladies are tired of listening to the radio. I'll be glad to turn it off. Oh, no, sir. We love it, don't we, Flo? Uh, yeah, sure. How's that baby doing? Oh, he's just fine, thank you. He's been sleeping for two hours now. Uh, and his second day of travel, too. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> he's really taking it in his stride, all right. When do we hit Nashville? We ought to be there in another hour, miss. Hungry? Little. We interrupt our program of dance music to bring you a special news bulletin. Police from the seven states alerted by the FBI have as yet found no trace of the automobile believed headed for California, carrying as passengers the two women and a baby who figured in the holdup three days ago of a supermarket in Philadelphia. No, shut police up. Police are confident that the driver of the car, A.B. Chandler of Philadelphia, what? is not aware That's of the identity me. of his passengers. And no. they express the fear that... Well, it, it looks like I've gotten a little better acquainted with you young ladies. Well, what are we going to do? We're going to California, of course. Yes, Mr. Can... Chandler, pull off to the side and stop. What? What do you mean? We're leaving you here. Oh, no, you're not. I'm driving on into Nashville and turn you That's over... That's a gun sticking in your back, mister. Now stop like I tell you. You understand? Very well. Now get out. Flo, well, look. What? What? That... that car. It's coming right over the side of... 
All right, put down that gun, uh, miss. Who are you? A special agent for the FBI. The FBI? Thank heaven. That's right, and your trip to California stops right here. <laughs> oh, look, Ricky heard that. Now he knows he'll never get in pictures. <laughs> For the holdup of the grocery store and the shooting of the manager, Lawrence Bethel is now serving a long term in a penitentiary. State and federal officials, convinced that there was no deliberate complicity on her part in either act, released the mother of the child, Ruth Patterson. Lawrence Bethel was just one more of the hundreds of criminals being brought every day to inevitable justice. But still, the crime wave in America rises higher and higher. Your FBI and your local law enforcement agencies can only capture criminals. They cannot prevent them from coming into being. That is a problem for America's homes and schools and churches and other social groups to solve. That is a problem on whose solution rests the internal security and future of America. In just a moment, we'll tell you about next week's colorful story from the files of your FBI. Once again, friends, let me remind you that no matter how much you earn you have a valuable asset in Social Security. And your Equitable Society representative will gladly show you how easy it is to build your Social Security into full security. He'll explain to you how Social Security and life insurance can work together for your complete protection and will help you determine exactly where you stand under Social Security. No obligation, of course. Phone him tomorrow. Your Equitable Society representative is listed in your local phone book under the name Equitable, E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E, the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, Lady of Larceny. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner, the author was Frank Ferries, and your narrator was Dean Carlton. This is your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. Now, this is Carl Frank speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, Lady of Larceny. On this is your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.